let us solve one other problem of finding collapsed load. Huh? So we have to find the collapsed load for this fixed beam of span L carrying a UVL throughout. So in this case, uh, you know that uh, in the last class I have told that because of the fixed beam, the redundancy will be 2 and uh, plastic heat has to be found to have collapsed mechanism is 2 plus 1 or plus 1 plus 3. So you can have the plastic heat just here at the fixed ends and at the mid span because at the mid span you have the maximum uh, sagging bending moment and the fixed uh, ends it has a maximum hogging bending moment. So you have a line that in your analysis. That means three plastic pieces will be formed, one at A, another at B, and another at C. Of course, here I will take this MP as the fully plastic moment carrying capacity of the section throughout. So there is no variation of uh, cross section here, or there is no variation of MP value here. So it is said. Now, at the, at the point of uh, mechanism, collapse mechanism, or at the point where the load, where the load reaches the collapse load, there will be formation of three plastic hinges, one each at A, B, and C. And this is the mechanism, beam mechanism you can have. So the difference between this and the simply supported beam is, in the case of simply supported beam, there will not be any plastic hinges at the supports. Only plastic hinges will be there under the load. Here in the case of fixed beam, we have three plastic hinges, one each at the fixed legs, and the other one at the point of maximum bending moment. The point of maximum bending moment is C here, that is the maximum sagging bending moment. So this is the diagram, this is the mechanism. Now here, since uh, the, this plastic hinge is here, it is found at the exactly at the mid of the fixed beam. So this also will be theta, this also will be theta. And this total deviation here will be 2 theta, theta plus theta, at this C. Now we have to find out the value of the WU using the concept of uh, that internal work done is equal to external work done. The one important thing here is in the case of the UDL, we are going to take average deflection. Delta we have to take average, that means we have to take delta by 2. In the case of UDM. Whereas in the case of concentrated load, we are going to take W, uh, delta X and part of the load. Whereas here, in the case of UDM, we take delta V. Now let us use that uh, concept internal work done is equal to external work done. Internal work done is due to the less plastic in the metal going to form. External work done is due to the load that is applied on the V. So internal work done is given by MC value multiplied by the corresponding slope or the rotation. So here MP into theta, so there will be three plastic hinges here. MP into theta is the internal work done here, plus here MP into 2 theta. At C, MP into 2 theta is the internal work done, plus at B it is MP into theta. So this should be equal to External work done is I think as WU, WU into delta by 2. I have to take delta by 2. This is what I told. In the case of uh, UDL, we have to take the average deflection. So average deflection we have to take. So we have to substitute for this delta now. So as already told in the last video, if you consider this triangle, of this triangle. So if you take theta, theta is very small, therefore theta can be put in tan theta. Tan theta upon to this is delta divided by L by 2. Or you can take delta as L by 2 into theta. This is what we have to substitute there for delta. And uh, since uh, the plastic thing is formed at the midpoint, so this theta and this theta they are same. There is no total of theta 1 here which we have taken the last uh, problem. So now if you simplify this, this becomes mp into 4 theta, we 
theta plus 2 theta plus theta is 4 theta is equal to W u into delta is nothing but L by 2 theta. So it becomes L by 2 theta divided by 2. That means it is W u into so L by 4 into theta. Now we can cancel out the theta term 4 into theta is equal to W u L by 4 into theta. So we can cancel out this theta. So therefore W u to collapse so W u to collapse so is given by W u is given by 4 into 4 16. 16 L by L. So this is the formula to find the collapse of the case of a fixed beam subjected to UDL throughout. So if you know the value of MP, you can always find out MP and L, you can always find out the collapse zone. So for example, I give you an example here. Suppose the span of the beam is 6 meters and if the MP value is 100 kilometer meter, so what is the collapse zone of the fixed beam? Then this is 16 into 100 divided by 6. So 16 into 100 divided by 6 means it is 1600 divided by 6. So it comes out to be 266.67. 266.67 kilometer. So this is the value of the W U L. 266.67 kilonewton is the uh, UEL that can be total UEL that can be applied on the uh, fixed beam. So this is how we can find out. So here this is total UEL. This is how we can find out. Okay. So now the same problem. If you analyze for simply supported beam. So, in the case of the simply supported beam, what happens here? So, what are the supports or simple supports here? Subjected to you. Same thing, only if you can the support conditions, L is the span. In this case also, so the maximum bending moment occurs at C. So, that is at the point. Maximum bending moment vectors and uh, plastic change also forms at C. But in this case, number of plastic changes required to form a mechanism is only one. Because R is equal to 0 for simply supported beam, plastic changes required will be only 1, 0 plus 1, R plus 1, that is 1. So that one plastic change will be at the C only. So this is how the mechanism takes place. So this is at C, this is the reflection, so W U here, so this is W U per unit length, total UDL is W U, so this is the total UDL, that's what we are going to find here. So only plastic in the form at uh, C, MP, there is no MP here, there is no MP here, so this is theta, this is also theta, because C is the midpoint, so the total deflection here is 2 theta, theta plus theta 2 theta. So this is the beam, this is the mechanism for simply supported beam. So if you apply this uh, internal vertical is equal to external vertical function for this internal vertical is equal to external vertical. Internal vertical only here, MP into 2 theta. Rotation is 2 theta. Is equal to external work done is, is total to W U into delta by 2 because in the UDL is assumed to act as the center point, but when you are taking the deflection, you have to take delta by 2. Same condition holds good. Here also delta will be L by 2 into theta because this is L by 2, this is L by 2. Same concept holds good here. Delta is L by 2 theta. If you substitute that and simplify. This becomes 2 mp theta is equal to w u into l by 4 theta. So r theta will be cancelled, we will be having collapse code in this case w u is 8 mp by 2. So you can 
not here and there. The collapse flow indication is simply supported beam of same span and same MP value is half of the collapse load that is then equaled by tensile load. So it is 16 MP by L here, here it is 8 MP by L here. That means fixed beam is uh, double uh, stronger than the simply supported beam in the plastic state. That is the main in this case, that is when UDL is applied. So this is how we can find out the collapse load for the required beam, whether it is simply supported or fixed or continuous or proper cantilever, or whatever it is, same procedure is applied. So first we have to locate the points where the plastic hinges are formed. So plastic hinges are formed normally at the supports, then at the, uh, for the point uh, where the concentrated load is acting, then at the point where maximum minimum load is acting, and at the point where the cross section changes or MP value changes or I value changes. So at those points uh, you have the development of plastic hinges and we should know how many minimum plastic hinges are required to form a mechanism. In the case of a simply supported beam, it is only one. In the case of proper cantilever, it is two, one plus one, two. And in the case of fixed beam, it is three. Because the formula is R plus one. R is the redundancy. Simply supported beam, there is no redundancy. R is zero, therefore zero plus one. One is the plastic hinge in the case of simply supported beam. In the case of proper cantilever, R is equal to 1, that is 1, there is plus 1 plus 1, that is 2. In the case of fixed beam, the tendency is 2, uh, therefore the number of plastic is required will be 2 plus 1, that is 3. So then we are going to use this uh, equation, internal work done is equal to external work done. Internal work done will be due to the formation of plastic in. It is the product of MP and uh, theta, that is internal work done. And external work done is due to the externally applied load, that is the product of W that is load and uh, the deflection under the load. So if you equate them, then you can uh, after subtracting for delta or down, uh, you can simplify and get the value of W. So here there are two things. One is W, another is M. So there are two things here. One is the load, another one is the uh, fully plastic moment. By only N1, you can find out the other. For example, in this case, in case of fixed beam, what we got here is, uh, in this case, subjected to UDL throughout, we got uh, uh, WU is equal to 16 MP by L. Suppose if you know the ultimate load, so to compute the collapse uh, or how to compute the MP value, so MP is equal to WU into L by 16. Same equation can be used in the case of if you support a beam on single lines, you get WU as 8 MP by L. So 8 MP by L, therefore, if you know WU, MP can be found out as WU into L by U. So this is how uh, we can find out. That means uh, uh, for the same span, for the same, uh, for the same collapse load, MP value will be higher in the case of simply supported beam compared to fixed beam.